little obsessed. Hi, welcome to another episode of Little Obsessed. Today we're comparing Games Workshop's contrast paints to Scale 75's instant colors. Games Workshop's contrast paints come in 34 colors and according to their website, they make painting simple and fast. They claim that when applied over an undercoat of gray sear or wraith bone, which are a light gray and off-white respectively, it gives you a vivid base and realistic shading all in a single application. Scale 75 instant colors on the other hand come in 48 colors and claim to achieve the same depth effect including highlighting and shadows as someone who applied coats and coats of highlights and shadows. Do they achieve their claims? Is one better than the other? We'll compare them both in this video. To test each paint range out, I decided to paint two giants from the Free Folk Starter set of Simon Games' A Song of Ice and Fire. Here they are before priming. They're beautifully sculpted minis and I thought the textures and elements on the models would really showcase what the paints could do. After removing any mold lines, I primed both the giants with a gray primer. In my last episode, I applied a Zenithal Prime working up from black, but I found it very difficult to apply the subsequent paint over the black. This time I wanted to start from gray. I discovered that what brand of primer doesn't matter so much for both paint lines, as long as you can use roughly the same shades as the instant and contrast ranges make. This time I chose to prime them both using Ice Charm from the instant color range since I had it handy. I then Zenithal primed them with Wraith Bone at about a 70 degree angle and then again from above using Holy Charm. Finally, I used Nuln Oil by hand to paint in the deepest recesses of the model. This by far is the most time consuming part of painting the miniatures using this method, but I believe the results are worth the time. There are excellent videos describing this priming method from both Dana Howell and Vince Venturella. Here are the giants after priming, all ready to go. I began painting the first giant using contrast paints. I applied Gilliman flesh to his face, torso, and arms. If possible, work from lighter colors to darker colors. This way, if you get paint on another area, the darker color you come back with afterward will cover the lighter one up. I then switched to Wildwood to paint his hair. Despite being bald, this guy's pretty hairy. And besides his long beard, he's got heavy hair on his arms and upper and lower back. With that done, I set him aside to let those parts dry and moved on to giant number two. Starting with scale 75's human flesh, I painted all of his skin parts. I find that human flesh has a great skin tone but needs more than one coat since it's such a light color. For this giant, I decided to paint his hair a slightly lighter shade of brown, so I used endurance brown. I painted the shaft of his club Rage Brown. Rage Brown is a reddish brown, and I thought it would be a good contrast to the other browns I was applying to the figure. If I found any paint on a spot I didn't want, I would just dip a brush with some stiff bristles in some clean water and then wipe it off with that brush. I painted his pants using Spectral Wolf. It's a light gray with brown tones. Switching back to the first giant, I painted his club using Wildwood and his pants using Apothecary White. He's got some sort of tunic wrapped around his waist and I chose to paint this using Agaros Dunes. His boots were done with Sigor Brown and the ropes around the boots were also done with Agaros Dunes. 
For the second giant, I painted his tunic using a mixture of about five parts savage beige to one part endurance brown. The stone on his club was painted using gullum gray and I used scale color brown leather for the straps. I find it's better to use regular paints for details like that. I wanted to match the boots from the other giant, so I used about five parts grizzly brown mixed with one part shadow black, and I got something that approximated Saigor brown. After both giants had a coat of paint on them, I began adding details like the stitching in the first giant's tunic and the shields on the second giant, as well as the metal band around his club. Also, I painted the eyes on both figures. With the details done, it was time for the bases. Since the free folk live in the north, I wanted the bases to be snowy and muddy, so I first coated the bases with a layer of AK Interactive's Wet Mud. Using Vallejo's snow effect, I applied snow to the bases in random patches, just like you might see when the snow begins to thaw. Finally, I painted the edges of their bases and added tufts of grass. Here's the finished giant done in contrast paints. And here are both of them. Before I get to the final comparison between instant colors and contrast paints, I wanted to talk about some of the common characteristics of the paint. First off, they're not a paint and they're not a wash. They're somewhere in between, so you have to get used to working with them. Once they reach a certain point in drying, you can't continue to work with them. You've got to let them dry before you do anything else with them. When a figure is highly detailed, like the fur or the hair on the giants, they're really good. But they're equally as bad when you apply them to flat surfaces, and that's when you'll see the paint pool or give you a blotchy effect. And since they don't have the same binders as regular acrylic paint, the paint can rub off pretty easily on the high points, so you definitely need to apply some varnish before gaming with them. And finally, they work great as a glaze on top of a Zenithal undercoat, and I think that's where they really shine. So for the comparison, I looked at a number of factors. First, speed of painting. Do they cover in one coat? Contrast wins here. In my tests, they are opaque enough to cover in one coat. Instant colors are too, but not for all colors. Human flesh is an example that needs multiple coats. Next is sheen. I personally like a flat finish, so the sheen is important to me. Contrast paints dry to a satin finish while instant colors are flat. Edge goes to instant colors here. Next category is color selection. Instant color again gets the edge in that they have 48 colors, whereas contrast colors have 34. The next category is about how easy it is to fix an error when you make it. With both of these paints, it's best to paint from light colors to dark. That being said, instant colors are easy to remove while still wet without leaving any paints behind. I didn't find that to be the true for contrast paints. Next category is about mixing colors. I have to say that instant colors mix quite well when you want to achieve another color tone. I didn't get a chance to try mixing the contrast paints only the instant colors, since I was trying to match the second giant's colors to the first giant, and not the other way around. That'll be something to try in the future. I'm going to give the edge to instant colors here, but really the answer is to be determined. The final category is how easy it is to work with. They both take getting used to, but for its simplicity of a single coat, I think contrast paints are easier to work with. That being said, 
I think you have more control of the color with instant colors, and that could be more important as you master this medium. Still, I give the edge to contrast paints. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Also, please leave comments and share with me any experiences you have with instant colors or contrast paints. I'd like to learn from your experiences as well. Hope to see you next time.